What's up? What's good? What's popping? What's cracking? What's percolating? What's really good in the hood? It is your man Theo Butler coming to you from my own special show called I Ain't Saying, I'm Just Saying. Y'all gotta bear with me. I got the YouTube page coming. We got the Instagram. We got the Twitter. We got the Facebook. We're gonna do it all. This show will allow me to say what I wanna say, when I wanna say it, how I wanna say it. You might get some cursing if I feel particularly passionate about a subject, but other than that, we're going to try and keep a GP. So the first thing we're going to discuss is <sighs> last Sunday, NBA All-Star game and Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas committed a heinous crime on national television where she figuratively and literally killed the national anthem. Uh, I was hurt. I had never seen such a travesty before in my life and I'm just taking aback. Like I'm, I don't necessarily get along with the national anthem. I know several of my brothers and sisters don't get along with the national anthem. But to the parents of the national anthem, we just want to offer our deepest, sincerest condolences because to see somebody get murdered like that on national television is just totally, totally unbearable. So that's how I feel about it, Fergie. You owe these people. The parents of the National Anthem, a huge, huge apology because what you did to that child was definitely wrong, especially considering the fact you're supposed to be a Grammy Award-winning singer. Carl Lewis can do that, but you can't. Next up, we want to talk about LeBron James, and not necessarily LeBron James. LeBron James being our most vocal, social activist when it comes to sports figures was told by a reporter who works for Crazy, I'm going to call it Crazy, because I'm not going to use the station name and I'm not going to use her name because basically what she was doing, she was trolling LeBron trying to make a name for herself. In essence, she told LeBron James that when it comes to his remarks about President Trump, he should just shut up and dribble. Okay. Look, y'all got to excuse me for the tag. I can't really, you know, going through something right now, but this is the show. <sighs> y'all accept this for what this is. There are certain things that you can't say to black people. Regardless of how cool you are with them, certain things you can't say. Never call a black male child a boy. Now, this could be an infant or this could be a full-grown man, but you can't call them a boy. It's going to be some issues should you choose to say some stuff like that. So, in essence, when this reporter from Crazy, Crazy, crazy Like a Fox, see what I just did? See that pun? Crazy Like a Fox, that's who she works for. But anyway, when you make those type of comments against african-american you can try and slide it in there and act like it wasn't a racist statement but yes it was because you're a grown-ass woman see how i just cursed in you're a grown-ass woman you know damn good and well with your educated ass that it's some shit that you just can't say to black men and think that that shit is just going what the fuck is wrong with you it's 2018 you tell them motherfuckers to shut up and dribble you done lost your mother see how i almost lost it but i can't i could because i ain't saying i'm just saying anyway moving right along Marvel's Black Panther has seemingly generated a lot of revenue, top selling film of the year so far, but it's receiving a lot of controversy. Listen, it's a damn movie. It ain't even a movie about a real person. It's a damn movie about a fictionalized character. Some of y'all mad the character was made by two white men. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not gonna give you the complete rundown history of the Black Panther, T'Chaka, T'Challa. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do all that because you got a smartphone, look it up. You got a smartphone, look it up. But I've come to understand that a lot of people have smartphones these days and they're perfectly fine being ignorant as hell slash stupid. So keep doing what you do. But when it comes to the controversy, listen, it's a movie. And this is the first movie that we've had, and I'm lying when I say that because I gotta give my shout out to my man Robert Townsend from Meteor Man and uh, Handy Man with the Wayans Brothers and everything like that. But a serious black superhero, aside from Blade, and Blade did have a lot of white characters in it. But this is the first movie to have damn near 95% black cast. And we can't be proud of that? Then I did. Y'all mad because Marvel making money and everything like that. But how many black actors, just actresses, just got paid? Just got paid. And y'all ain't even thinking about that. Oh, man. He did. It's a damn script. Some of y'all do more complaining. Then y'all do contribute. Not to mention, I'm gonna talk to y'all white people. Shut up. 
Ain't nobody say nothing when y'all did Batman. Ain't nobody say nothing when y'all did Superman. Ain't nobody say nothing when y'all got the flag. Y'all act like black people can't have the same thing that y'all got, which is what's wrong with this country today. Are y'all fucking stupid? Yeah, I'm kind of passionate about racism. I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. Now, when we talk about black superheroes, the CW network, because a lot of you white people and a lot of you black people use the CW network to justify your outrage with the Black Panther, has this character called Black Life. Jefferson Pierce, you need to get up on it. It's more about a black family than a black superhero. By the way, his daughters also have powers. He's got two daughters. It's a family thing. Catch it. Go watch it. You'll learn something. And that's the thing. Try to get our young men, our kings, our lions, our queens, our, our lionesses to understand that it's more to you than sagging. And I understand it's a fashion choice. There's more to you than just cursing. I understand that some of y'all lose that like it's a second language, but it's more to it. It's more to you than that. And that is what these shows are trying to tell you, that there's more, there's strength to being a positive black person than just being a stereotypical nigger. Yeah, I said it. It's my show. I ain't saying it. I'm just saying it. Lamar Jackson, see, segue. Lamar Jackson, Heisman Trophy winner, Louisville Cardinal quarterback, is getting ready to enter the NFL draft. Not too early. Just calm down with the excitement. See, the thing is, you have some experts saying he should just transition over the wide receiver. Why? Let the man play. His season this year was actually better than his season last year when he won the Heisman Trophy, which means this man has a high ceiling. All we got to do is let him grow. Draft him. Let him sit behind the quarterback that you got right now, like they used to do. And let him grow. Let him learn the game. Hell, you signing him, you draft him in the first round. Draft him in the second round. Either way, we know he ain't going to get paid that much because he's going to be on a rookie contract. It's not like we had to do back in the day when your first round draft pick made all the money. It's different. So, stop saying this man can't play quarterback. And y'all should know better because you know what? Y'all said the same shit about Doug Williams. Yeah. I said it. He wasn't the only one that y'all said it about. Y'all said about a lot of black quarterbacks back in the day. Y'all said about Warren Moon. Stop with that. If he gonna fail, let him fail. But the man has showed you that if he can't do nothing else, he can bring a team together and he can put points on the board. You call yourself a coach? Coach. Just that simple. If you can't coach an athletic 6'4 stud, maybe you shouldn't be coached. I ain't saying it. I'm just saying that. Now let's get to what's really serious. We've had some healthy debates about this all over social media, even where I work at. I like my tag. I might just keep my tag and give it a little name. I might. This might be the new style, y'all. We're going we gonna to start sewing tags and shirts right here on the right shoulder. That's going to be the new style. But anyway, let's go to... Y'all got to excuse me. Marjorie Stroman Douglas High School. The shooting that took place on February 14th, Valentine's Day, when we're supposed to be showing love to one another. We didn't do it. The young man by the name of Jacob Cruz walked in and he killed 70 people. The reason why it's so serious is because we had a school resource officer standing outside. That school resource officer was suspended without pay. In layman's terms, he was fired. Because when you get suspended without pay, you can't come back to work and you ain't getting paid. So what happens when you get fired? You ain't coming back to work and you ain't getting paid. True enough, he got his pension. But here's the thing, and I get it. I actually see it from both sides. I looked at a picture of the dude, and if I'm not mistaken, the young man's name was Scott Peterson. I think that was the school resource officer. Scott looked like he's somebody's grandpa. And Scott had nothing but glowing reviews on his uh, resume. And I can believe that. Now, I, I don't doubt that not one minute. But Scott was put in a position where at the age that he is, he was probably set up to fail more so than to succeed, regardless of the type of training that he had. And if anybody wants to debate me, y'all know where to find me. But here's what we're looking at. Columbine, 1999. How many school shootings have we had since then? Go look it up. But here's what we know. When the shooters enter the building, they're not looking for conflict. They're looking for bodies. They're looking for victims. They don't want to run up on somebody who may potentially stop them from killing. What they want to do is kill as many people as they want to. 
That's their standard operating procedure, and it's never changed. So what happened? The school resource officer stayed outside, and I understand why. He didn't want to die. But there's certain jobs in this world that you can't take if you're not prepared to give your life for another. And it wasn't just him. Scott Peterson is the only guy whose names we got. But what I've just found out, y'all need to research it, is that there were three other Broward County deputies outside with him who also did not engage. That's a travesty. I have three daughters. My 16-year-old goes to school. I don't know what I would do if something happened. The school resource officer has an office in the school. His job is to serve and protect. He failed. Now, I can sit back and say, well, I understand. But to a degree, I don't. Because your job should have outweighed your desire to live. It's just that simple. I'm a six-year veteran of the United States Marine Corps. If something popped off the day of tomorrow with North Korea and they invaded America, I got to pick up an M16, still my favorite weapon of choice. I don't care how old it is. And I got to defend people that... I don't like, I got to defend people that don't look like me, but I got to defend them. That's what you sign up for. It's just that simple. And I'm not the only one that's saying it. It's your oath to serve and protect that saying it. It's your oath that says, I promise to defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It's your oath. If you don't hold, uphold that oath, quite simply, you fail. That's how I feel about it. And then on top of all of that, we finished the last thing where we have right now. There's a video out where there's a young man brutally beating down three females. Knockout blows. Every blow is meant to tear somebody's head off. Y'all need to find that young man. And I don't want to tell y'all to get him help. But y'all need to find that man. Because one thing I won't do is I won't encourage violence on this particular show. But what I will say is, that couldn't have been my girls. That couldn't have been my daughter. That, that yeah, I was almost on the mindset to say that was, yeah, that's, I'd beat his ass. I'd still be looking for him to beat his ass. I don't give a damn what anybody say. That's my child. That's my child. You hitting my child like she a grown ass man. I'm, I got to come see about you. It's just that damn simple. I'm going to put these, I've always wanted to say this. I'm going to put these dick beaters on you. Yeah. Dick beaters, I'm going to put them on you. All in your mouth. All in your nose. All in your eyes. All upside your head. Oh, 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 oh. That's what's going to wind up happening. Um, fellas, I know it. Sisters out here, <laughs> yeah, I get it. But putting your hands on a sister, nah, man, we can't do that. Learn to walk away. Learn to walk away. Listen, I'm just saying, I ain't saying, this is going to be funny. This is going to be it's going to be something that I like doing. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff on here. We're going to do it weekly. Uh, I might slip some videos in there throughout the course of the week. So you kind of, you know, got to check with me. Uh, get me at CEO underscore IAS underscore IJS at Instagram. Hit me at the same thing on Twitter and look for Theo Butler or look for I ain't saying, I'm just saying IAS, IJS on Facebook. It's public. We gonna do some interesting stuff. We gonna do some funny stuff. I can't wait, because it's gonna get a whole lot damn better. That's my time, I'm out. Peace.